Hello there, everybody. Fear my games with a new part of the Guild Wars Prophecies playthrough. It's in the morning. I have a nice day off due to Veterans Day. I get the laptop to uh, convert the video, and you guys will be seeing it hopefully the day after the, this recording. <laughs> so we have a side quest. We, um, you guys, remember last time we started our Great Rock, did some side quest stuff, went all the way up here. Did some exploring. We actually ended up getting to Alona Reach, which is a mission. Apparently we can do if we want to right now. And then we get one around, grab the... And then basically I was like, you know what, I'm, while I'm here... I think we either had a side quest that took us in this direction, or I just like, let's do some exploring over here, because I knew that... I know there's like a small little outpost over here that I wanted to find. Or both, honestly. That's a very real possibility. Actually, I think there was a quest that took me here, and then I've decided while I'm here, I might as well go over here. I thought it was over here based off my map over there that I have on the screen. I'm not sure actually if you can pick up my finger that way. Uh, and we found it. It was Seeker's Passage over here. It's just a small little outpost here with some merchants, some NPCs, and stuff like that. As well as a big skull of what looks like to be some kind of gigantic elephant that once existed around here. And there also happened to be apparently a side quest in this Terza person. Forgive me if I seem startled, but it has been ages since a living being has spoken to me. Please, don't think less of me, but I have a rather selfish request of you. When the event that destroyed my people occurred, I was supposed to meet my betrothed, Chabar, out in the salt flats near one of those curious teleportation paths. We thought it a perfect place to be alone. It has been my single lasting torment that I never found out what happened to Chabar. Although it was unlikely that any sign of his remains would have survived to this day, I would like to be certain. Would you, could you, would you go to the Salt Flats and see if you could find any sign of Chabar? It would be on my honor. It looks like we'll get us new, two new skills for our troubles, as well as a little bit of uh, uh, other stuff. But it does, the one thing that's kind of surprising to me is, is the fact that, uh, you know, she's a ghost. Well, she doesn't really have anything to fear. Why couldn't she have just done it herself? Some real questions that need to be answered. Unless there's some like kind of curse on the inhabitants of the salt flats. So it looks like I'm actually gonna want to go up and around, mostly because of the fact that I am um, mostly due to the fact that I have not been up there before. So I might as well get some of that cartography stuff done. There we go. I'm, I'm a bit more on top of my ca uh, casting my anti-magical spells and stuff like that. And I believe my party composition is slightly different than what it was before. <gasps> hey, oops. I believe I brought, I had two melee heroes, Little Thorn and Mox, I think it was, or something, or, or something like that. I decided I just wanted one frontliner, Little Thorn, and then I'll have, that way I can make sure I have both the healer and the protection henchman. As well as a my mage for magical damage and the cultist because we have so many magic damage dealers that um, it'd be a bit of a problem if we didn't have blood as power to I think that's what the spell is that gives us enemy. Yep, no blood ritual. He doesn't have blood as power yet, but blood ritual still gives us a nice amount of energy regeneration, which is always nice. Perfect, I was able to get off backfire because they used all of their interrupts before I casted it. Casting backfire on enemy mages is, is like striking a gold is like striking gold in the gold rush. Can happen, it's just uh not always a guarantee. There's smoke just everywhere. I actually want to jump on the storm can before we engage those hydras, because it looks like we're about- yeah, we just got pincers, so it's a good thing we did not aggro those hydras first. Clumsiness and then empathy on him. I'm going to then focus fire on this guy. Oh. Some more stormkin have arrived. I just passed past my cry of frustration on nothing, and it feels like a scrub time, you know. That time I pressed it, but I just made a mistake in hitting it. Yeah, you know the Crystal Desert. It's a very different feel in Guild Wars 
too is a lot more full of life. <laughs> There's actual farmland and uh, people populating the area. Compared to now, we're just like an empty desolate where ghosts and stuff are kind of just haunting it after perishing in the harsh landscape, trying to ascend. And now all this stuff is kind of like a thing of the past, where it's like, like why is it a thing of the past of such a thing that was desired for hundreds of years? I don't know, but that's kind of the way things a lot of things happen in Guild Wars 2. Uh, I saw it coming. I wasn't sure if it was on me or if it was on somebody else, but I'm doing my best to try and dodge it anyways. Unfortunately, it did not quite work out as well as I was hoping. Uh, Inferno, I need a... Inferno is a bit too fast of a cast. Well, I mean, I probably could have interrupted it. Interrupt the meteor, interrupt the fireball. Watch out for that meteor. I didn't move fast enough there. Interrupt the fireball. I still love using bait scene, even though I have no points in smiting prayers. It's only just because of the fact that, uh... The interrupt and the fact that it's a zero energy cost, just a slight damage spell, and potentially an interrupt spell, too. Oh, look, there's an NPC over here. That's a little interesting noises you guys are making over there. So is there anything over here, or is it just, uh, end of the soft flats over here? Kind of curious. Since we're here, we might as well explore. That's kind of my logic with a lot of things in this in this current playthrough. Is just like I'm here. Nobody, I'm not on anybody else's timetable. Might as well uh, see what's over here. The shiny. Let's see. And I wonder, is there actually a place over here? No, I don't think there is actually is a place over here. But I wanna. But you know, this will go f towards the um, campaign. The the. Uh, Oh yeah. yeah, there's nothing right there, so we might as well go back this way then. Hey look, a dune lizard. We aggroed it. I got my eye on you, ah. I'm way too slow on the Conjure Phantasm. I think part of it is not just through the fact that, like, Conjure Phantasm has a... Let's say test cast them. I think it's because of the fast casting skill that I think is the Esmezzers they probably have access to. Which reduces the which um, which decreases the activation time of spells and signets. So he probably has a higher fast casting spell than probably what the previous Mesmer NPCs had encountered. Which means that Conjure Phantasm before I might be able to time it if I do it right. With these guys, they cast it so fast I don't really have the time to react for it. I think that's what was going on there. So he has an imposing mask, but it can't be upgraded with an insignia. Why would I want that then? Damn. Oh, so that guy's the that guy's the. Uh... So that guy's a healer boy. Definitely want to focus more on this guy's spellcasting as much as possible. He's healing breeze is able to counteract my conjure and phantasm, unfortunately. Right now I'm just relying on my healers to be able to heal me. What? Oh, I got knocked down. Uh, thankfully, though, my character was still doing the... Still decided to actually cast this spell. So what happened was, I was like, okay, I'm going to cast um, Power Spike, but I got knocked down by the Hydra next to me, probably by Meteor. Um, see if I can kill this one for real fast. And, and so basically what happened is my character still decided to cast the spell But thankfully right when I cast the spell he started casting Aegis, so I happened to interrupt him Ah, oh, I was too slow casting it I 
I'm gonna cast Backfire on him now, so that way he can effectively heal himself, which means he should die if we can do enough damage in the next 10 seconds. I just have power spike too. Alright, we got him. Looks like he did have more health than I gave credit for, because I wasn't expecting him to cast any spells, but I guess he had uh, just enough health to cast it. Yeah, he probably has like plus six or plus seven on his healing freeze, which means Conjure Phantasm alone is not enough to stop it. Go, die, Stormkin. I guess we don't need to kill you because you're running away. Ha! He ran out of our very presence. It wasn't because he didn't see me. It was because he was too scared. Okay? <laughs> well, looks like we're almost at our destination. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three. It seems as though I have been standing here in eternity. What can I do for you? Tisra's ghost has sent you. Oh my, beloved. So that's why she never came that day. I have waited here all this time, hoping against hope that one day I might know her fate. But to find out that she is a ghost bound to this house place as I am, it is almost beyond bearing. I know something that might bring her a small bit of joy. Take this silver ring and give it to her. On the day we were supposed to meet, I was going to ask for her hand in marriage. Perhaps the ring will give her some small comfort. Now, I feel like the quest name is actually a little bit of a spoiler for what he was going to do. You know, it might just be me. But it seems like a bit of a spoiler. This is a patrol. He spoke to his ghost, and he gave you this. He was going to ask for my hand in marriage. Imagine that he was he has was waited out there all of this time. I think I think I can rest a little easier knowing his fate. With this ring you have given me more than I can ever hope to repay you for. Hmm. That one's either load actually seems like it's not too bad, except for the fact that I lose all my energy. And never mind. I I was like, ooh, I gain energy regeneration, and then I'm like, oh, I lose all energy. Maybe not. <laughs> Though it might not be too bad if it's something where it's like, how much is the cost for it? Probably something I don't really use very much, isn't it? Ether Lord. Let's see, I, so I think where if I, let's say I had only 5 energy and I cast it, I would then get increased energy regeneration. I think that is probably the time where it would be kind of useful. It's like, I'm already empty of energy, so I might as well cast it kind of thing. <laughs> So let's go to this Jorn Kudabe, return our other side quest, the Into the Unknown. Yes, the Mesa is impressive, isn't it? If only I had been able to reach it, but I'm sure you'll do just fine. You look pretty capable to me. But of course, I've said the same about the last two dozen people that have come through here as well. So what do I know? In any case, I wish you good luck in your trials. This guy is not useful at all if he doesn't, if he can't, doesn't, isn't all that picky. It looks like we had one of the skills that he already that he gave us, but oh well, we get another free skill. If it's if one thing that's very good about doing these side quests is if like if you're somebody who's only just now playing Guild Wars One, it's a very good easy way to get <laughs> skills for free as well as some experience. So let's do time. Is it? Let's see how long I've been going for. Only for fourteen minutes. So I'm going to do this ghostly vengeance quest, and then depending on what time it is, we'll either call the episode there, or we will go on to the next mission. I don't remember how long it is, um, but I'm I'm leaning to, towards a short episode. I'm have a bit of a headache today, but we will see how I feel in a few minutes. Scarab Nest Builder. I'll tell you, it's a... It is a ranger. If 
probably like looks like to be an interrupt ranger specific more specifically. No, I guess they both have interrupt spells, but I'm not quite sure why they're different. Maybe like different bows, like one's a short bow, <gasps> and the one might be like coded as like a long bow kind of thing. <gasps> Hiccups. Whoa. Well, the quest does say kill minotaurs, so while we're here, we might as well kill them. Damn hiccups. They just keep coming, damn it. <laughs> Alright, well on the bright side, these dev hours aren't looking too bad. I think I think this is definitely the the better team composition. I feel like we're doing a little bit better at killing them. That or I'm just doing my job better. Both of them are are possibilities, very real ones. Oh, we we are being attacked. Okay. Let me just interrupt that. I do like to fire. Oh no, I was too slow on that one. How about no, good sir? Oh, these guys are now getting elite skills. I don't have an elite skill yet. That's not fair. <laughs> me, me saying that kind of reminds me of uh, one of the, the first graders I work with. Uh, where um, when she's she's like, that's not fair. He's winning. <laughs> Uh, I, I, that's always funny to me. <laughs> Whenever she does that. And she's entirely serious, by the way. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Psyquist, Psyquist, Psyquist. Well, in terms of general things going on, um, so far this once a week kind of thing has been working out well for me. I'm able to, because like the last few days, I, I, if I was trying to maintain a video, a video almost a video a day, I definitely would not have been able to do this week. Combination of being extremely exhausted, like two out of the five days today, and then a third one was a, with the this week. I mean, not today. You can't have five days in a day, I know that. <laughs> uh, and the other one, we had a friend visiting. So it's like, uh... <clears throat> so it's like, I would not have been able to very easily record a video if it was more than once a week. Today, it's going to be kind of a fun thing, is I'm going to be going out with my girlfriend, and we're going to be getting a gerbil cage, because we're going to get gerbils soon, because gerbils are adorable, right? Huh? Gerbils are adorable? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> She's playing uh, some Frambo in the background right now. A weird game. Tell me, at least. Wow. <laughs> Did you give me a kiss? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now my head, head thing came out. Earphone. That's what's going on. Alright. Oh, more minial paws. See, we have five out of ten of them have been brutally murdered. I mean, slain. That's the more appropriate term, right, for a video game? <laughs> I mean, they would have tried to kill us, too, anyways, but, you know. Oh, look, there's a boss. Most likely a warrior boss, considering it's a minotaur, though. I mean, the hydras ha are all elementalists, but then the boss hydra was a monk. So, you know, the rules do not always apply here. At this point, they with the um, 
with the Minotaurs. It's almost entirely a, just a thing of waiting until they until their dirt pain runs out and then they die. That's basically the whole battle with the Minot with these Minotaurs. Is right at least with the with you, my henchmen and myself. We don't do enough DPS to burn through the extra health from the under uh, pain before it runs out a lot of the time. At least as far as I can tell. I mean, unless we're doing some big burst damage. That I'm not expected. So we have one wayward minotaur left. I think the game half expected us to be coming from the Amnute Oasis, I wouldn't be surprised about. I, I don't actually remember where I took the quest. There's the last of the Minotaurs. It looks like there's even an extra one. For extra murder. You know, if you get- I know- I like how you're kiting, but if he can't attack you in the time that it takes my, my clumsiness to go off, my clumsiness doesn't really get as effective as it could be. I'll have you know. Well, we finished the uh, vengeance of the ghost. I think he- I think he was killed by Mentors, right? Yep. It was vengeance because the Minotaurs killed him. Down with those damnable Minotaurs! Ah! I can almost hear their final breath rattle out of them as they lay on the sand of mangled and bleeding. Oh, and- oh, sorry. I got a little carried away there. A deal is a deal. You have my thanks. Antra Persistence. Any illusion magic you cast lasts 10% longer. Blessed Aura. Enchantment spell. While you maintain this enchantment, monk enchantment spells, the enchantments you cast last 10% longer. Well, not too bad. Uh, well, let's see. How long have we been going for? I think we're going to go for as a mission. Next time. So we'll be doing the, I believe this guy, so this is going to be the Aguri, no, this is the Ascension mission right here at Aguri Rock, which is basically over there. And once we complete that mission, I will be able to change my secondary pressure from Mesmer Monk to whatever I damn will please, as uh, so long as I either, I believe prophecies, according to what I saw on Nihilist, you can actually take quests to, to take it in, or if this was factions, you pay a platinum and you can get your secondary secondary class. So I'll probably be spending a decent amount of time doing all the secondary quests, uh, secondary profession quests, if that's actually a thing. Still. Because I might as well get access to all of them. And with that, guys, thank you guys for watching. Nice, short, succinct video of just doing some stuff in the desert. Next time will be the mission. Goodbye. And have a good rest of your day, night, evening, wherever it may be.